We're joined now by NYCFC team president Brad Sims. And Brad, first off, thanks for joining us. And let's start first. Uh, five years ago, the team started the mini pitch initiative, and you've wrapped it up this year. 50 mini pitches in five years. What does that feel, and what has it contributed to the community? Yeah, I mean, it's 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 amazing that uh, it's amazing work, and a credit to all the people uh, at our at our club, but in especially our partners, the Mayor's Fund uh, to advance uh, New York City, the uh, U.S. Soccer Foundation. Eddie had and uh, and of course Adidas that, that have helped make us make this a reality. I mean, really, Joe, the, the last two years. I mean, if you said that we're going to build 20 pitches uh, during during these times, during COVID times, especially last year, like 2020, it was a miracle that we were able to get anything, you know, any of these done, and we were able to build seven last year, 13 this year. We're we're finishing up next week, big ribbon cutting on uh, on Wednesday the 10th, and we couldn't be more proud about uh, about really setting the standard for this type of community program throughout the country in any sport. Earlier this week, you were on the Soccer in the City podcast. You talked about the stadium initiative, and it seemed to be a shift from the Bronx maybe to Queens. Any update? Yeah, so, I mean, obviously always number one, uh, number one folks. I thought, I, I thought Ian was going to ask me. I mean, Ian, <laughs> Ian always likes to, likes to get on top of me about this one, so I'm, I'm, glad, uh, I'm glad you're asking. But, yeah, no, I think um, we really felt and, and still feel in many ways, you know, the, the project that we had for the Bronx was, was going to be a, a transformative you know, a transformative project for this neighborhood, for, for a neighborhood that is, you know, deeply in need of some transformation and especially the areas that, that we were looking to, to completely reform. Um, and we believe it was a great project and very disappointed that, that it kind of didn't uh, move forward this summer like we thought it would. Um, at the same time, it's, uh, you know, one, one kind of one door closes in some ways, another door opens, and, um, you know, we're, we're, you know, really excited and engaged about uh, this, this opportunity potentially in Queens, um, and we, ha we got to see where it goes. So, you know, for us, it, the, the key is wherever the project is, whether it's in Bronx, whether it's Queens, whether it's somewhere else in the five boroughs, um, it has to be a project that the community wants, that that community, that that neighborhood, that that, uh, you know, that 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 community board and the elected officials in those areas and, and the residents of those areas that they really want. Um, and so that, that needs a lot of dialogue, a lot of conversations to, to, to figure out all the stakeholders and what, and what they're looking for in a project. But uh, so far, we're very encouraged and uh, enthusiastic about a, a potential opportunity in Queens. All right, that's the easy question <laughs> done with, Mr. President. Okay. Let's get down to the business side of it for me, which is the football. Obviously, it's been a tricky campaign. You have had the COVID issues, COVID protocol, stadium obviously moving from here to another stadium, trying to find a home arena for these players to be settled in. For Ronnie Dyla, it's been pretty difficult, but the job that he has done, once again, this team is in the playoffs, which to me matters most. How happy are you personally with the job that Ronnie's doing? Yeah, no, I mean, we, we're thrilled with where we are. I mean, I, I, I'd be lying if I said that, you know, a couple weeks ago, you're, you're fighting for your playoff lives and, and, you're, and you're feeling not so great. You know, I think that uh, six years in a row in the playoffs, uh, it's the third longest streak in the MLS. I mean, so, you know, I know that our fans have come to expect uh, that that's the minimum kind of, you know, minimum ante to play uh, every year. And, and we believe that too, as a club, we say, yes, I mean, we expect that as a minimum, but it's, it's actually harder than it looks in some ways, the third longest streak on league. Look at a team like LAFC two years ago, supporter shield winner, broke the record for most points in league history. And, and today they're sitting in ninth place fighting for their lives uh, in the playoffs uh, and, and needing some help to even even make it in. So, uh, you know, we're, we're proud that we're in the playoffs for six straight years. We're proud that uh, we're playing for a home game. I mean, we could get as high as a two seed here today. Um, and but but at the same time, it is the minimum expectation. And, and that's the minimum thing that our fans deserve. Our fans deserve a playoff team every year and they deserve a team that's fighting for the MLS Cup every year. And, you know, again, we've said before, and, and you've seen the form that we've had the, you know, the last, you know, three games, um, it's, it's a great time to get hot. Hopefully we keep the hot streak going. And a lot of times it's the hottest team, you know, that, that, can, that can take it home. So we're, we're very optimistic. Oh, yeah. All right. Brad Sims, president of New York City Football Club. As always, Brad, we appreciate a few moments. Thanks for stopping by. Absolutely. Thank you. Thanks, Dad.